Hello and welcome to Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. I'm Becky Parker Geist and I'm your host. Audiobook Connection is your place to learn about the audiobook creative process and for authors to learn valuable tips on producing and marketing your audiobooks. This podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to talk today about unpublished children's books or children's stories that have not yet been published in an ebook or a print format. The reason that I'm covering this in this distinct way is that if you have not had your book published yet, you may also have not yet had it illustrated. Many times, children's book authors are turning to publishers for their publishing rather than publishing independently. And you may be aware that many publishers actually prefer that you not have your book illustrated when you submit it for potential publication. As we are probably all aware, breaking into traditional publishing is very challenging. And the world of independent publishing has really opened the doors for those for whom getting a regular publisher has been difficult or for those who just would rather retain all the control of their own intellectual property. So particularly in a case where you're a children's author and you have a manuscript that you are going to publish yourself, the illustration piece can often be quite an expensive prospect. There are certainly many ways to find less expensive ways to get a book illustrated, but as a general rule, the illustration part of publishing for you would be one of the most expensive pieces. When we're looking at audiobooks, yes, audiobooks can also be an expensive format to publish in, but not necessarily. When we think about children's books, often they're very short, so not a lot of text is involved. And that in itself, just the sheer brevity of the project overall, really makes a huge difference in what it will cost to get it done in audio. It's not nearly the size of budget that you would need for, let's say, like an 88,000-word novel. Much, much different. And so what I'm proposing that you consider is that if you have this manuscript, that you might consider instead of spending the money on illustrations, if you even have the budget for illustrations, you might consider producing it as an audiobook. The big difference with audiobooks for children versus print books, and I've talked about this in some of our other podcast episodes, is that the enhancement of the story, if you will, rather than it being visual, you're just making it aural. So, for example, rather than seeing a picture of a dog, you might hear the dog whimper or bark or growl. So you're bringing the story to life in just a different way. The next thing I'd like you to think about and consider in this prospect is the idea of going through your story as it is currently written and paying particular attention to what part of the story, what aspects of the story call up sounds. For example, you might in your story have somebody come in the front door and take off their shoes and the dog comes running through the house and starts licking the face and uh, barking and making all a commotion. And then you hear a crash in the kitchen. So These are all obviously things that could be brought to life in sound. You could have the sound of the door opening and closing, the dropping of the shoes, the sound of the dog's paws on the wooden floor and the the whimpering or whatever sound the dog might make. You can hear the crash in the kitchen. These are all ways that we're bringing the story to life in audio for the child's imagination. 
or really, I should say, just supporting the child's imagination, helping it along so that they are really getting a whole feel for it. And kids love to hear the sound effects that are a part of an audiobook with them in it. They really, really make it fun. So now what I would suggest that you do is go through your manuscript and look for what those opportunities are. Is it rich with suggestions of sound? And if it's not, then you may want to consider modifying it slightly. This is also, in your writing, an opportunity to really dive more deeply into the sensual context, the environment that you're creating for the story itself. This makes me think of a theater improv, a game, theater game, where you go on stage and you are portraying some character. But the important thing about the exercise itself or the game is environment, that the character, whoever you're playing, regardless of what they may be even going through emotionally or their circumstance, they are in an environment. So let's say they're standing at a bus stop. The game or the exercise is to experience the environment itself. So then you start to think about, okay, what am I seeing? Oh, there's traffic passing. What am I hearing? Oh, did some dog bark? Do I, you know, am I startled by this sound? Does the wind suddenly blow my hair back? We're really in that kind of exercise. We're really trying to delve deep into the richness of the environment itself. And just by doing that, that the audience actually can get a feel for where you are. Even if there are no words that are spoken, you can start to get a feel for where somebody is. And so it's a little bit like that. Except, of course, you are likely to have text as part of your book. But what can you do in terms of the way that you describe how somebody is walking down the street, for example? Even just walking down the street, we can assume some kind of traffic. But what if it's a quiet street? Do we, if it's nighttime, do we hear crickets or do we hear sirens in the distance Or or do we hear, if it's in the daytime, do we hear birds? There are so many little things that if we really think about what the environment is and imagine it very deeply and richly and fully, then we can start to add those little suggestions in. Now, they don't necessarily have to be included in the text. And in fact, in many ways, they don't need to be. As long as you know, and your audiobook producer knows enough about the richness of that environment, then many of those things can be built that enhance the story without there being any mention of it. But it really can be fun as well and very educational. Now, especially with very young children, where they're, we're connecting words and sounds and building that identification with those. For example, if you have, you know, the dog barking and you mention it, you say it in the text and then we hear it, we're building those connections. If you hear the wind blowing through the trees and we hear the rustling sound of the leaves or the howling of, the, of a wilder wind and we're referring to it, that again can sort of build those recognitions. Things like Pouring lemonade. You know, you can hear the sound of pouring. It's a very recognizable sound. There are also some sounds that are not so easily recognized. I'm going to use as an example turning a page in a book. This is actually if you hold a book up to a microphone and you turn the page, you can't necessarily tell what that is. It comes out a little bit more like a click sound than anything else. So there are sounds, and this is a a whole area of sound production in film that is really quite exciting and and a a really cool uh, part of the sound industry, audio industry, is doing these Foley sounds. These We're creating something that sounds the way, like describing 
for example, the squash of, you know, something being squashed. And the object itself, if you actually do that sound realistically, it won't necessarily come across when you hear it to be what it is. It's a kind of a strange thing, but it's it's often true. And so sometimes the creation of a sound is done in a different way so that it sounds like what you think it would sound like. Uh, that might be like biting into a watermelon, for example, might not sound like you can kind of imagine what you think it would sound like. But when you do it, do the actual sound in a microphone, it may not necessarily sound that way. Anyway, I probably went a little deeper there than I needed to on that whole question. But the point is really that it's great to go through your manuscript, make sure that you have a rich oral environment that you've created. Look for the opportunities. I've actually seen um, many manuscripts for kids where there's very little suggestion about sound, related to sound. And so it makes the creation of an audiobook rely very heavily on music as an option. There's nothing wrong with music. It's great. I love to incorporate music in an audiobook for kids. But there are so many more opportunities. And if you're in this position where you have a manuscript and you have not published it already, so there's no conflict, if you will, with something that you've already put out there into the world— then you might want to think about that. Let's take just a short break, and then I have one other suggestion I want to share with you. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about one of our latest innovations. Here at Pro Audio Voices, we've come up with a system to help our clients gain control over the launch of their audiobooks. With Amplify, you'll start with a beautiful custom sales landing page for your audiobook. You set the retail price, and you can run promotional pricing and get discount codes for special event offerings or any other reason at any time. Not only that, with Amplify, you'll earn a whopping 65% of your royalties based on the amount you sell each audiobook for. And remember, that's all pricing you control. But we're taking it to the next level by adding in a series of emails with step-by-step -step tutorials on how to use that landing page once you've got it. If you're looking for a way to control your launch, your pricing, and get paid just three days after each sale is made, then schedule a call with me at proaudiovoices.com. Please note that Amplify is available exclusively to the production clients of Pro Audio Voices and to those who join our audiobook marketing program. We hope you'll join us. So when we started out, we're talking about if you have an existing manuscript and maybe have already been pursuing the publishing path that, you know, this option of creating an audiobook rather than spending the money on having it illustrated. So that's one scenario. I want to offer up another scenario that can really be a lot of fun and something that if you are the creator of children's content, something you might want to consider. And that is creating storytelling time or creating stories that are specifically designed for audio. I think about when my kids were young and I loved to read to them, but then we'd turn the light out and then they still wanted more stories. And with the lights out, it was a great opportunity to just create a story on the spot and just head off into our imaginations. And it didn't even, in that context, it didn't even necessarily have to have a good start and middle and finish. It just had to have enough interest for them to gradually drift off to sleep. So I wasn't in a, you know, trying to build a story that was really gripping. I was trying to do something that was very relaxing. But what I'm talking about here is the creation of stories that are full-out stories that you might end up 
choosing eventually at some point, whenever, to publish, but not necessarily. Think about them as stories that you're going to tell rather than read. And then I would again recommend that you take this story that is created and designed specifically for telling and then go through it and look for the places where you can enrich it with a soundscape, with a deep and rich environment for the story itself. And then to sort of wrap this up, I would suggest that if you find that you've written a a telling story, an oral story that you really enjoy or characters that you really enjoy is make up a collection of those stories. I personally think that for children's authors, this can be one of the most cost-effective and fun, rewarding ways to publish stories and to get established and to have content that you can share with the world and and just build, keep building with the characters that you love, with the the kinds of stories, the kinds of adventures, whatever it is, whether they're bedtime stories or whether they're, you know, stories for car rides or any old time, just maybe they're calming down stories. Maybe they're stories that relate, as the Berenstain Bears stories do, to different lessons, different ways of dealing with challenging situations like bullies and things like that. So you can, you know, obviously do a a riff, if you will, on uh, whatever themes or characters interest you and build a repertoire of stories that you can then put into audio. One of the things that I would probably recommend is that if you'd like to go and with a collection is that you build the collection of stories, do that preliminary work before heading into the audio process. And that's primarily because I think in general, you find it more cost effective to do a full series if you're going to do a full series to do it all at once rather than piecemeal. Obviously, you would be able to build additional stories or collections of stories, and you may find a narrator that you just really, really love and would love to have them do the full series. So that's, again, one reason why it can be more cost-effective to do a collection. But I wouldn't want that to slow you down. If you have one story that you really love, one book or, or story, that you should go ahead and consider putting that into audio and have an experience of that because I think that you'll find that it's really rewarding. One of the fun things that you can do if you have kids in your life and you're wanting to write stories for them that you're not necessarily going to publish, but you know, you might later, is practice on them in terms of the story content, the storylines, the characters. Start to play around and find out which characters you build that they start to really fall in love with and want to hear about again and again. So using your target audience as your test audience can be really good. If you are a children's author and you have more questions about getting a children's book into audio, please feel free to reach out to us at proaudiovoices.com. Have a great day. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for joining us for Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. Please take a moment to subscribe at audiobookconnection.com. The podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Learn more at proaudiovoices.com. Again, thanks for being with us, and please join us next week. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.